Mr. Chairman, we've got three for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. First, I want to comment on, on the small business tax credits. My understanding, they're only for two years. So, and it's only for employees of 25 or less. So if you are a small business with 25 or less, you can be uh, subsidized or uh, with a tax credit for two years, and that tax credit goes away. Therefore, you're going to choose either to continue the expense of health insurance, which is going to be driven higher by this bill, or drop it. The second of all, if you're a small business, which I consider a small business with 51 employees, there are a lot of them in my district, you have no tax credit and mandated to provide health insurance, or you you choose to put people to do the exchange and make that other part. And I don't know if y'all look at that type of behavior when you do that, but I want to go with the question. You sent uh, uh, Mr. Lewis, Mr. Evans, Mr. Lewis, our, our former ranking member, a, a letter saying about the, the appropriations process, the appropriations part of it, saying that there was a list of new activities for which BIPACA includes only a broad authorization for appropriations of such sums as necessary. And for those, those activities, the lack of guidance made it difficult for you to come up with a score or necessary amounts you can bring that forward the second the second point though is there was one that in section 1311 a1 where the secretary and I'll just read it it's an amount necessary to enable the secretary to make awards for state-based exchanges these awards can be used to facilitate enrollment in the exchange and you estimate that at two billion I mean that's the number yes and, and then the Kaiser Health News reported that the, a member of the administration, Donald Berwick, the administrator of Federal Centers for Medicaid and Medicaid Services, was talking with the states. The states were talking about the pressure for Medicaid, and he said to them, it was reported in, in Kaiser Health News, he was sensitive to that situation, but his solutions, however, were to point states to funding that he said is already available to them, such as subsidies to establish insurance exchanges. And I would have to guess that, that if, if that's what the administration thinks should happen to help states through their budget crisis with Medicaid, that's going to be far more than $2 billion. So my question is, what what assumption did you make? with two, and, and the secretary said this and in a meeting on March the 3rd, I think it was, 3rd, that she has complete, um, there's no limits on how much she can spend in this provision. There's no limit. She said that. And she has no need for additional congressional authority to spend it. Obviously, a member of the administration says you can spend it to help states plug their Medicaid budget up. So what assumptions did you use to get to $2 billion? So we estimate that outlays uh, uh, for grants in this, uh, under the section would be $2.1 billion over the 2011 to 2015 period, at which point the, uh, the program ceases. Um, those estimates are based on the cost of implementing uh, other programs in the government that we believe are similar in their structure, not in the precise substantive purpose, of course. Um, and that's the way we do estimates in general of the cost of implementing various programs is to try to look for analogies and other things that government has been doing. And we, uh, so far, CMS has announced uh, awards of $49 million uh, for planning grants. Um, we think that uh, there'll be, as I said, about $2 billion spent over the five years in total. But if the, uh, if the Medicaid service is correct and it's available, he said he points to solutions to point to states to funding that he said is already available to them, such as subsidies to health, health establish health insurance exchanges. So if those subsidies are used in a way that helps the state, because you can facilitate enrollment by granting more money for Medicaid to get more people to enroll in the healthcare exchanges. That would that would follow under the law. I know you can't follow that behavior. So this section, this section, I believe, limits the grants to activities related to establishing insurance exchanges, and. Uh, so I don't think that changes in enrollment um, amount or activities related to establishing an exchange. It's certainly the case that this $2.1 billion number might be too low. It might also be too high in our judgment. We think we've tried to put it in the middle of the distribution of possible outcomes. I understand what you had to do. You had to take one similar model. I understand your modeling requirements. But my point that I'm making, the people in the administration are taking a far broader term that. I know you have to use this as you look at examples. But I think facilitate enrollment in the exchanges is a broad term, and, and obviously people in the administration seem to think that way. At least somebody at the very, you know, you know, somebody that should require Senate confirmation made that comment. So, but I'd like to yield the last thirty seconds to my friend from Louisiana. At the